guys, it's Claire. This week's video is definitely one of my favorite videos. Um, I'm really passionate about space, so I thought, why not research something cool in space? So therefore, the topic will be... Insert drumroll? Satellites! Now, before we get started, I just want to clarify that satellites are not space junk, okay? Satellites affect our everyday lives, so how could they be considered space junk? Why do people think that? So basically this video is going to be about just everything there is to know about satellites. But my main question is, um, how do they not fall to Earth and how do they stay in orbit? Um, and who made it, who made it all happen, you know? Um, like, how do the laws and equations apply? to satellites because they do. Did you know? Wow. Um, now, when I was researching, I just thought of satellites as a man-made object, not gonna lie. Um, but there's actually so much more to them that I didn't even realize, so that's why I'm here to educate you kids. Get ready. This video's gonna be a good one. Bye! Okay, so we're currently walking towards the pond so we can get a better view of um, what it would look like during the daytime to see satellites. But the goal is at night is you want a clear opening, um, not, not many trees blocking your sight to see satellites. Um, they can be very bright depending on the weather. Um, this morning at 6.17 a.m. the ISS actually passed over Richmond, Virginia. Um, but it was too cloudy in the morning to be able to see it. Let's go! As you can see, it's currently raining right now, so it's not the good weather to see, um, satellites. But it's during the daytime too, so you can't even see satellites in that sense anyways. But the reason I brought you here today is because no trees. If it was a clear night, you would be able to see a satellite. Um, and also, next time you look up at the night sky, remember that there's over two million kilograms of metal circling the earth between you and the stars. So what even are satellites anyways? Well, glad you asked. They're an artificial body placed in orbit around the earth or moon or another planet in order to collect information for communication. There are 713 satellites circling the Earth for communications, for telephones, for radios, for televisions, anything. There's also 374 for science because everyone wants to know what space is like. Am I right? Yeah. So there are also 401 satellites being used for government use, meaning they're watching you, so watch out. <laughs> Due to the pouring down rain and my phone not working anymore because it's soaking wet, we're gonna have to take this inside. So, let's go. Hey guys, so we had to take this video inside due to weather. I apologize. Um, but anyways, there are currently 4,256 satellites orbiting the planet, an increase of 4.39% compared to this time last year, which is a huge. So, Will. I have a question for you. Do you know what the ISS stands for? Um, you know it's not on top of my head right now. Well, I'm here to save your day. The ISS is the International Space Station. And did you know it is almost always occupied by four or more people? Yeah, that's right. On a satellite, there are people living in a satellite. Four more than crazy? what? What? You said four, four or more um, people. Gotcha. Isn't that crazy? Here's the layout of the International Space Station. I would explain every piece to you because it is actually very interesting, but we do not have the time. So a frequently asked question is how do satellites stay in the same place? Well, Johann Kepler was the first to accurately describe the mathematical shape of the orbits of planets around the sun, around the moon, around the earth, and they were thought to be perfectly circular. Um, Kepler stumbled onto the concept of elliptical orbits. 
In order for an object to stay in orbit around the Earth, it must have enough speed to retrace its path. This is as true of a natural satellite as it is of an artificial one. From Kepler's discovery, scientists were able to infer that the closer a satellite is to an object, the stronger the force of attraction. Hence, it must travel faster in order to maintain orbit. So really, a satellite's ability to maintain its orbit comes down to a balance between two factors, its velocity and the gravitational pull between the satellite and the planet it orbits. Finally, a satellite does fall towards Earth, only it never falls into Earth. To understand this concept, we have to remind ourselves of the fact that the Earth is round, that is, the Earth curves. In fact, scientists know that on average, the Earth curves approximately 5 meters downward for every 8,000 meters along its horizon. If you were to look out horizontally along the horizon of the Earth for 8,000 meters, you would observe that the Earth curves downward below the straight line path a distance of 5 meters. In order for a satellite to successfully orbit the Earth, it must, it must travel a horizontal distance of 8,000 meters before following a vertical distance of 5 meters. A horizontally launched projectile falls a vertical distance of 5 meters in its first second of motion. To avoid hitting the Earth, an orbiting projectile must be launched with a horizontal speed of 8,000 meters per second. When launched at this speed, the projectile will fall towards the Earth with a trajectory which matches the curvature of the Earth. As such, the projectile will fall around the Earth, always accelerating towards it under the influence of gravity, yet never colliding into it since the Earth is constantly curving at the same rate. Such a projectile is an orbiting satellite. So that was kind of difficult words, but basically um, when you project a satellite into space, you have to make sure um, it is not going straight up. It's actually a little diagonal because once it shoots out, it'll start falling down because of gravity. But actually when it shoots out 8,000 meters, it curves down into Earth and then it gets into orbit because it's constantly falling downwards. Not that complicated, it actually makes a lot of sense, which is weird because a lot of people think, oh, well then, um, meteors, how do they fall into Earth? Well, because they're not falling around Earth, they're falling straight into Earth. Satellites are constantly orbiting in different patterns, and I'll show the picture of the orbit paths of different satellites. Each satellite has a different path depending on the usage of the satellite. Um, for um, scientific satellites, half of them orbit um, around the equator, basically, and the others go over the poles, um, so you can get different views of so I'm not sure if it was clear in my other videos on our way to the pond, but the reason I wanted to take um, you guys out there, even if it was during the day, um, I wanted you to get an understanding of how you would be able to see a satellite. Um, you don't want any city lights interfering with um, your views, so um, your best bet would be to go to a beach or even to the pond, um, but the beach away from the city part because it's easily it can easily get confused with a star, except satellites and moving stars aren't. Um, and the and you'll be able to tell the difference between a plane and a satellite is um, well planes have red and green lights, but sometimes aren't as visible. But the plane's lights blink. Satellites are a constant shining spot in the sky um, and at times some will look like they're going slower it just depends on their path mostly but um, a lot of the times you'll only be able to see them for three to five minutes at most the reason I wanted to go to a pond to our pond at least um, was because there's no there's no trees blocking your view and the water's reflecting, so there's not so much crazy lights going on to look up and you don't see a dark, pitch dark sky. Um, sure, there's still the glow of the city interfering, but it's not as bad. So that's why I took you guys there, and I hope you learned a lot about satellites during these crazy videos.
um, the weather was not on my side this weekend, but I hope that you learned a lot, and if you have any extra question questions, feel free to ask me. Thanks, and thank you for listening. Bye! <laughs> on set with Claire Tallheimer making her video, she has 30 minutes to make it, and she won't let me go fishing. This is a disgrace. What a mean woman. This is just... Well, shut up. There's it's a raining. pond we need to get right this here. Alright. You saw it first. Get the car out of the you shot. We need to be down there. Are you videotaping? Yes, I'm videotaping. Get down to the shot. Right, right here, right get down to the pond! Why not? You're gonna cast and I know it. <laughs> okay, we're done. Okay, ready? One, two, two three. Hello, we are we are um, currently at a pond, and as you see, there are no trees. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Um. I can cut it, and I don't have to reach over again. Okay, so one. Ding. Also, there are 160 for technology demonst demonstration. Is that Hayden? Hayden! <laughs> Hayden! She definitely Hi. has ADD. I'm filming my physics project. <laughs> okay. Okay, ready? Will, come on. Will, no, 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 no. Get your back right here. Will, I hate you. 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 I don't have time for this, Will. Come on.